The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Almighty and ever living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who reign, lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
A reading from the book of Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What, therefore, you worship is as unknown. This I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him through and though indeed he is not far from each one of us for in him we live and move and have our being as even some of your people your own poets have said for we too are his offspring since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art of imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed the day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me and those who love me will be loved by my father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I will not leave you orphaned. Thus says the Lord. This gospel passage speaks to a common human experience. The reality, the fear that we feel when we lose a loved one who has played a very important role in our lives. This reading is part of Jesus' farewell discourse, a very long goodbye that takes place over five chapters in the book of John. These formal farewell speeches were quite common in biblical times. They provided a time for uh, being filled with words of comfort instruction for survivors, and practical sensitivity. Those of us who have experienced a loss 
of a significant person, a mentor, a leader, a parent, a friend. We know how shaken, how concerned about the future that we become. You may wonder, what do we do now? How shall we proceed without that strong personality who held the family together? As a congregation, you have experienced the retirement of a pastor of 20 years. Anytime a pastor leaves for any uh, reason and occasion, it creates a whole gamut of emotions. There is sadness, there is anger, there is disorganization, depression, and grief. And so, you may find it easy to relate with the disciples today and with what they are going through. For the disciples, as Jesus talked on and on and on about his going away, their anxiety and stress and confusion multiplied. Hadn't they left their old lives to follow him? Was, had they not come to believe he was the Messiah? Was he not their friend and leader and advocate? Why would he leave them? They had only been doing this for three years. They had a whole lifetime ahead of them of work to do. And now he was telling them that they would carry on without him. It is little wonder, then, that in this moment they f were feeling abandoned and even orphaned. Separation anxiety is a very powerful emotion, and Jesus was giving them a heads up. Jesus knew the powerful feelings that his disciples we're going through the feelings of being abandoned, panicked, vulnerable, disorganized, angry, and sad, outraged, unstable, alone. These emotions are emotions of loss, so personal and so deeply felt. And it's a funny thing about loss. We don't like to talk about it very much. And yet it's such a prevalent part of life. Whether it is the process of losing that one may experience with disease, such as with Alzheimer's or dementia, or it may be the loss of a relationship such as in through divorce, or the loss of a job, or moving, or the loss of health and abilities. So prevalent, so common, so difficult, and so few places where it is safe to name our loss. Now, you'd think that of all places, the church would be fluent in the language of loss. But alas, we're not much better at talking about it. In fact, we don't like to talk about it either. But we can become places where it is safe to speak the language of loss and to name our loss. We can choose to walk with each other, to comfort, to extend a listening presence, to combat feelings of isolation with a choice to claim full life in the presence of loss. 
in his farewell, Jesus actually gives us an introduction. I will not leave you orphaned. One is being called to walk with you through this transition. The world is not going to fall apart after all. That which was begun will live on. There is a power that will work with you and through you, through it all. The Spirit, this Spirit we call holy, is truly God present. Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, true God with the Father and the Son. The Spirit is not merely the power of God, the essence of God, the energy of God. The Spirit is the presence of God. The Spirit is God. And we believe that the Spirit is active in the world today, living out what Scripture says, that the Spirit is with us right now. John 14 tells the story of Jesus preparing his disciples for the task ahead. He tells them, I'm sending you out on a task, and it's going to be a very difficult engagement. And I'm going to send you someone, the Paracletos, who will guide you in what to do and how to do it. Paracletos is a Greek noun that is translated in our English Bibles often as advocate, as helper or counselor. What it literally means is one, someone who is called in. Someone who is called in. Called alongside to help, to counsel, to advise, to advocate. Here's some of the things that scripture tells us the Holy Spirit is doing now. The Holy Spirit helps. Helps people to see what they have done wrong and points them to God. The Holy Spirit helps us to do right, nudges us along whether we're listening or not. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand the Bible opens it up so that we can learn from it, so that we can apply it to our everyday lives. The Holy Spirit prays for us when we do not know how to pray or what to pray. The Holy Spirit counsels us when we are in need. The Holy Spirit comforts us when we are in pain. The Holy Spirit helps us to know the special gifts that God has has given us gifts such as helping and teaching, showing mercy and kindness to others, encouraging people, leading, and wisdom. The Holy Spirit helps us to live out the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit includes such things as love and joy and patience and peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And finally, the Holy Spirit helps us see that we need God. The Spirit sanctifies us. That means that the Spirit makes us holy. The Spirit is what gives us faith as believers. Now, in this list, you may have noticed the terms the Holy Spirit helps, said again and again. Those titles for the Spirit, comforter, counselor, advocate, guide, intercessor, revealer, spirit of truth, witness, and teacher are all given because the Christian journey and practice is filled with challenges. We're going to need that presence with us. 
We are given the spirit in the shadow of loss. Its presence is here to build new life, to live fully loved, and never be orphaned. Never be orphaned in the reality of change or loss or even growth. We can identify with the disciples today because we've experienced loss just as they are experiencing it in this farewell discourse that Jesus shares. Loss is part of life. So I invite you to name your loss. Let us be a people of comfort, of faith and courage. Let us be people who can come alongside each other. Come alongside when we name those losses. Let's step beyond the cultural fear of talking about it. And be a community infused with the Spirit. A community where we practice and grow the ability to come alongside with each other in faith and in love. I will not leave you orphaned, thus says the Lord. Amen. In holy baptism, we are called by the promise of God into a relationship of faith toward God and love toward one another. 
This relationship finds expression in our gathering as, a, as congregations of the church to hear God's word, eat and drink at the Lord's table, and minister to the needs of our community and God's world. As Lutheran congregations, we call pastors to lead and assist us in our ministry, to teach, challenge, and admonish us according to the gospel, to counsel, comfort, and guide us in the love of God, and to oversee the events and activities of our common life. The interim period between a former pastor's leaving and a new pastor's coming affords us an opportunity to reflect on our past, evaluate our present, and dream toward our future as God's people. In partnership with the Central State Synod and Congregational Council, Pastor Gina Maria Coberl has agreed to be the interim pastor at Messiah Lutheran Church. I commit myself to this new trust and responsibility. I promise to fulfill my responsibilities to the best of my ability in accordance with scripture, the Lutheran confessions, the constitution of this congregation. Will you as a congregation receive me as your pastor and partner in ministry as we seek God's call for us in this interim period? We will. As a member and leader of this congregation, I ask you to join me in support of Pastor Gina Maria Coberl, to pray for her, to help and honor her for her work's sake, and in all things to strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ. Will you join me in this support? Amen. Welcome, Pastor Gina Maria. We now officially begin our partnership in this interim ministry in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you call your people in baptism into the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we be renewed daily by the gift of your Holy Spirit, and may we be especially aware of your leading during this interim period. Grant us faithfulness and peace in all that we do, so that you may be glorified among us. We pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. Rejoicing, rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Draw your whole church together as one. Bring an end to division. Send your spirit into your people and rouse us to greater love and mission. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our for the earth, for scientists, for photographers, and explorers, for scholars, poets, musicians, and artists, and all who lead us to greater knowledge and appreciation of beauty. For lakes and rivers, watersheds and wetlands, ponds and oceans, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For the nations, give wisdom to those who govern, strengthen all who work for peace, protect those who have been displaced or have left their homes in search of safety and freedom. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need, for those who suffer abuse or neglect, for those who suffer post-traumatic stress, for those who struggle with addiction, for those who grieve and all who are ill, especially Darlene Aaron, Henry Bremenkamp, Pat Brown, Gianni Burnell Graves, Ron Callen, Jeff Dykeman, Claudia Farrell, Randy Greenwood, Ed Heitz, Haley Hubbard, Debbie Huff, Vera Kimsey, Kathy Kutnan, Marilyn, friend of Christine Carlson, 
Shirley Masters, Audrey Pierce, Jeff Fursif, Shelley W., Jan Schnaff, Nellie Seward, John Sfigera, Pat Sfigera, Louise Sterling, Steve Swain, Jennifer Umland, and Kim Wool. Hear our prayer, our Lord in your mercy. For this assembly, bless those preparing for baptism and affirmation of baptism. Strengthen our ministries of evangelism, outreach, and pastoral care. Deepen our faith and knowledge of you. Lord, in your mercy. Lift up in prayers, Messiah's Stephen Ministry Program, asking for God's guidance and blessing as we move forward in recruitment and training of Stephen Ministries in our congregation. Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died, especially Helena, the mother of Constantine. Inspire us by their witness of your love. Bring us to your internal presence to live with you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Joining our voices with your faithful ones in every time and place, we offer our prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
merciful God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying was, has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Living and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood and freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus who lives among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave us life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, this life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all the dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, that with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome to share in this meal of forgiveness and of remembrance. We will be communing at the rails. You will receive the bread and then a cup. You'll have the choice of wine or grape juice. There are gluten-free elements. Please let the assistants know if you need those.
All are welcome. Come, let us eat.
invite you to do something a little different, and that is take the hand of the person next to you as you receive the blessing of communion as a family of Christ. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us sing. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witness to God, to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. You may be seated. This time, when we open up to announcements, uh, one thing today, we are having a picnic after the 11 a.m. worship service, so you're all invited to come back for that, and I believe there's a couple other announcements, either one of you. <laughs>
Thank you. Now, I'm, oh, one more? Okay. All right. Please stand and receive the blessing. Now may the power of God strengthen you. May the love of Jesus comfort you. And may the power and wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, remember the poor. <laughs>